Hi teammates, as usual, I am your host, Sean J. McCall, and this is the Eurostep, where we try to take a look at and behind the scenes of European basketball. Sometimes it's wild, wacky, um, but most of the times it's, it's a beautiful game, right? So before we begin, for those of you that don't know, remember, if you want to ask a question, either drop it in the comment section or in the question mark there at the bottom of your screen, and I will try to get it in. Um, yeah, for those of you that were here before, they know, um, before the actual live thing started with, with guests, I'm a little bit nervous today. I don't know why. I broke my, my favorite cup and, um, my hands are shaking a little bit. <laughs> so uh, let me get started with my first, with my guest tonight. Um, this is the first time I've got a, a, a manager of a team. Uh, first time I've got a, a general manager of a professional team here. And as you guys know, I, I would like to have a lot of varied guests and um, different parts of this basketball world. And I'm really pleased to um, announce Yunu Georgescu. He's the general manager of CS, CSO Voluntari, which is a first league team in Romania. And the crazy thing is, is this guy is only 33 years old, but he's already won eight titles as a general manager, not just with Voluntary, but other clubs that he was at before. And I find that astounding. Um, we're going to talk about how it felt to be the youngest sports journalist in, in Romania at the tender age of 15. Yes, 15, he was writing stories on sports. It's crazy, right? So... We'll talk about that. We'll talk about how he climbed the, the ranks of his first club to eventually becoming the general manager there as well before he moved on to other clubs. We'll also talk about, which I, which I think is really important to know, um, what a general, general manager looks for in a player. And I, I'm, I'm interested to hear what he says about that. Thank you for everybody that's just joined. I'm trying to wave at everybody. Yeah. So now let, let me get my guest in so we can get started. It's accepted. And there we go. Good evening, Sean. Thank you for the intro, man. Thank good, you for having me. Good evening, man. I'm 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 really excited to have you on, man. You're the first GM type that I've that I've had on and, and uh, I hope you can give us some some nice background information on what your job entails and not just um, going to games. I know it's it's way more exciting than that. You've got a lot more duties to think about, and and I think that's what my teammates would like to hear about, like the normal days of of a general manager. Um, so at, at at the beginning, I like to tell everybody like how we met and things like that. And you guys that have watched this show before, you know that most of the people that I that I am able to talk to, I didn't know firsthand, and it is the same with. With, with with my first guest here and it's crazy because I've started to follow you man because I liked your your Instagram handle oh thank you thank you I try <laughs> to be I try to be you know uh, present on the social media I don't post uh, that much anymore but with my background in journalism sometimes you know I feel some uh, itch that I, I would like to write something or post something out but usually, you know, I'm promoting uh, my activity also uh, less and less about uh, family moments because, you know, Instagram, it's like a, a, a highlight. Uh, it's a highlight reel, you know, people are yeah. posting about how happy they are and uh, how yeah. beautiful their lives are. But we know that uh, beside the joy, uh, it's a lot of uh, struggle, a lot of effort, uh, sweat and tears yeah. from the player's side, also from the front office. Uh, it comes... Uh, uh, not the same effort, but definitely a consistent, uh, uh, a consistent uh, drive to to do the things better for the organization, for the players. And uh, this is me now, 9 p.m. Um, just <laughs> finished uh, another day at the office. Uh, I was I I, I uh, was staying after the practice to watch some under 18, under 16 game. Uh, now it's halftime, and uh, uh, I I was uh, I was uh, expecting uh, our. Uh, our our meeting so once again very excited and uh, looking forward to answer to any questions you might uh, you might you might have for me or your guests uh, might post on the comment uh, section thank you and 
I didn't know when I start, first started following you, but you were also the general manager for one of my former guests on here and one of my former players when he was in Germany, Monier Pratt. Mo Pratt, Mo Pratt, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Good guy. Amazing guy, amazing guy. Still, uh, you know, uh, love his swag and uh, coming with, <laughs> with his cap always. You know, I was, I, was, I was messing with him all the time about, you know, having uh, the cap and uh, being, uh, like, authentic, you know. I like, I yeah. like people who are authentic and uh, Mo is one of them. Uh, we won a trophy together, uh, the Romanian Cup in Sibiu, in front of the best fans in Romania and in an electric atmosphere. Uh, and so, yeah, once again, you know, beautiful, beautiful uh, memories. And he's a, he's a veteran in our league, a player um, very, very respected. And uh, he, still, uh, he still plays like a good wine. So you cannot, you can, you can, you cannot appreciate more. Uh, of course, I, I can appreciate more uh, when he's not playing against us, when exactly. he's playing against us, you know, how it is. <laughs> But uh, definitely, you know, I take pride. I take pride that I, I uh, still have amazing relation uh relations with uh um with with my former players my former coaches and with everybody that i work of course uh, there are also <laughs> like opposite situations but in the exactly. 90 97% of the cases i'm uh, i really stay connected and it's 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 amazing what this uh, orange ball what kind of superpowers this orange ball has to connect us with people from all around the world like we are doing right now and uh, to yeah. um, uh to build to build uh, relations relations that will stand and uh, that you know will um, will evolve in great friendships because yeah. i'm I, i'm happy to say that with so many of my former players uh i we are still talking on a daily basis and uh, we are still uh, um remember the good old days you know also i'm lucky and i'm blessed to Uh, that I I've been part of successful organizations and uh, uh, since I uh, I started uh, to work in basketball at the age of uh, uh, 17 um, I I, st I started as a press officer and then very quickly as a team uh, team delegate at the age of 19 I was already a, the g general manager of the club and at the age of 21 I became the youngest executive president of the powerhouse of Romanian basketball and um, uh, the most successful club like let's say in the last 20 20 20 years we won 11 titles 11 championships in 12 years we won fiba europe cup uh, uh, we played um, some amazing euro cup campaigns and i think we we've been a catalyst for what uh, the next powerhouse is like cluj napoca i think is now in uh, champions league uh, top yeah. eight uh, playing with ludwigsburg of course a team that you exactly. know very very well yeah. um my my former team my first team and the team of my city uh ployesh tasas of ployesh has been the the catalyst um the game changer in our romanian basketball so um yeah you've i think part of some, some, you've been a part of some good teams man hey really yes uh, this is my fourth club in voluntari we are next to bucharest just to give some uh, geographic uh, uh, geographic point to everybody to understand bucharest uh, probably is more well known Uh, voluntary, let's say it's a small city next to Bucharest, uh, but I've been in Ploiești for, for many years, there I grew up and uh, uh, I got connected uh, with so many people because I represented the club also on the European level, uh, being the uh, first, um, first hand for the Ulep Cup or uh, FIBA Euro Cup competitions when we, we organized, uh, so I had the pleasure, you know, to um to be in touch with the teams and to to learn a lot from my peers uh to networking is everything man this is what we are doing here you know of networking course. is everything and um maintaining the connections i also have a i also have an interesting rule that i will share with you now at the beginning of discussion you know i dedicate i'm dedicating uh one day one day per week to uh, to reach out uh my basketball friends this means coaches players, uh, agents, uh, whoever, I have a list. I have a list of 100 people and I'm keeping updating the, this list. So wow. just, you know, to reach, to be something honest, not a, a multi-message, just, you know, to check out, hey, how is the family? How are you? How, how, how is your health? Um, where are you right now? You know, just general things that are helping us to, um, you know, to... 
uh, expand our our network and also to uh, to maintain those friendships because yeah. uh, in many in many cases we are getting reunited by the same love the love the yeah. love for the game yeah. so this is a very honest and pure feeling so uh, I believe we we should maintain the connection like this even though you know like uh, uh, basketball is also business uh, we know that and uh, you know business can be rough uh, sometimes. You know, club agent, uh, agents, players, yeah. and and so yeah. on. But uh, you know, if you handle it right, and if you are handle it uh, handle it honest, I think you can uh, stand tall uh, in front of, <clears throat> in front of everybody, and to to be uh, to be able to um, look at yourself in the mirror. And for me, at the end of the day, that's the most important thing. And I've been trying to do this. I also learn a lot because, man. You know, you play the game, but for me to be in my position and to to stay on the sideline of a professional team, hey, I never <laughs> played the game, man. And that was a label. That was a very hard, very hard, very tough label, you know, because I didn't come wait, from wait, from the gonna, court. We're, we're gonna get to that because I can see you. I I know you're a writer because you've actually already touched about on about. 80% of the things <laughs> I want to talk to you about. So no we're going to stop. We're going to roll back. And Let's then go we'll back. Catch up. We'll catch up to where we were. We left off now. So um, you touched on it just right now. So were you a basketball fanatic when you, when you were younger? If I, Sorry, can you repeat? Were you, were you a basketball fanatic when you were younger? Were you a big fan of basketball when you were younger? I was a basketball lover and I became a basketball junkie. You know, I, I became a total basketball junkie. And, um, yeah, I mean, uh, I'm 88 born, yeah? So I'm almost 44. I'm, I'm, I'm uh, turning... All By the way, your birthday old. is the day before mine. Yeah, all right, man. So we can, we can, <laughs> we can cheer about that. Uh, well, you know, uh, I didn't play the game professionally. I, right. I, I enjoy the game. I enjoy to play... Uh, you know, with my with my with my friends, with my colleagues, I I enjoy to play in some junior level, but uh, I also I am a very very realistic uh, realistic person, and I try to keep it simple and crystal clear with myself. Mm -hmm. So I found out very very quickly that I will not I will not be able to play. Of course, I wanted to, you know, shoot like Jordan and done like. Uh, <laughs> Uh, Vince Carter, <laughs> no, it, it was not, it, I, I couldn't do those things, but I knew that I want to, uh, to stand, to stay close to this game that I, I, I really fell in love, you know, with, right. with, with the game. So I needed to find a way, to find a way. So I was already working uh, in media and very quickly at the age of 16, together with some of my good friends, we created the first basketball website in Romania. Incredible. So we wanted to um, to have a platform where the entire community can gather and communicate and share their passion for the game and also to to stay like updated to post news and uh, you know uh, but everything started from a, to make a, to create a database and to have a forum yeah. but we evolved with that with this idea and we made the first basketball website which had a you know, great, great impact. I mean, all the players, also the, the federation, everybody was looking because we, we, uh, we had the main platform. Um, and this um, made me visible in front of my uh, club uh, in my city, Assesoft, and they offered me to become press officer for them. And of course, I took it with both hands. How old were you when you became press officer there? 17? 17, 17, yes. It was 2005, exactly when uh, that was the season when, uh, when our team won uh, FIBA Europe Cup. This is the only international trophy uh, ever won by a U Romanian club. Romanian club. Uh, yes, in, in basketball, of course. We, we, we have been successful in handball, in football and so on. Uh, and... Um, I mean, we, it was amazing, the final four organized by my city, and we, we won against um, Lokomotiv Rostov, now Lokomotiv Kuban, um, you know, top team in VTB and, uh, and Euro Cup uh, in the finals by one point. So uh, that was the moment to, to, to give you the perspective. That was the moment when the average budget of a Romanian club was like 200,000. So nothing. 
And there was this team from Ploiești who was able to play a world champion like Nikola Bulatovic with 20,000 per month. Yeah. <laughs> so we really, I mean, we destroyed the market, but in the same time, we raised the standards so high that people understood, hey, if we want to compete with these guys, we need to invest more. Right. We need to have better players, better coaches, better facilities, and so on. And this, you know, um, keep on rolling. Mm -hmm. It was like, uh, uh, you know, it was a huge desire, huge desire not only to win domestically, to win the titles, but also to represent Romania um, abroad. And I remember, you know, the season 2007-2008 when we participated for the first time in ULEP Cup. Mm -hmm. And man, we played against a team of uh, uh, Akasvayo Girona. This was the last team of Margasol. It was their right. Roman Before Jackson, left, right. Dar Daryl Middleton, um, Drobniak, Vitor Sal, amazing team. And also, we played against Grata Sarai with D. Brown from Illinois University, who became my player 10 years, uh, not 10, <laughs> 10 years, sorry, later. like seven, seven years later. And we, 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 we had again success at uh, the European level. So uh, we succeeded to, to bring in Romania great teams and model, model for us, you know, to watch and to, to see, okay, what are the standards for this type of level, what we wish to reach. Right. So, uh, yeah, from my beginnings, that was it, 17 press officer, but very quickly they, uh, they saw that uh, I was very enthusiastic and uh, uh, capable, um, I think, to, to handle various stuff. So... I that's, start, you know. that's exactly where your 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 journey really gets interesting because at that time you're you, you've been in the club four years now, so now you turn twenty one, and yeah. now from then yeah. on you are what? Yeah, I uh, they named me executive 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 president of the club. In that Which moment, made you the youngest. In the Europe, youngest, right? yes, yes, I was uh, the youngest of a professional club, like top league. I don't know about second the right. leagues but yeah for the top league for sure at 21 and, yes yes and um uh it was it was an important moment <laughs> but i must share with you something that still still give me nightmares to say like that because um for my first season when they named me you also you know um the owner of the team uh had different you know businesses that he he needed to take care and for the next season, the budget went, it went smaller and we need to make a younger team. And, and after seven, seven consecutive titles and six cups, in my first year, we lost the final in the, of the league, receiving a basket in the last second from the opposite court, from the free throw mm -hmm. line. Oh, it hurts. was like this. I can still dream it, you know. <laughs> Tyler Morris was the play American player who scored the basket, and he brought the title to Cluj, which was an amazing moment for Cluj. But you know, it was tough. I just, you know, it, it humbled me and it, it humbled uh, all of us because you know, after seven titles, six cups, you you are on high clouds. Of course. Uh, but this motivated us a lot, and uh, we won another four, four titles in a row. And we made some success, successful Euro Cup campaigns. I mean, we advanced in 2015 to uh, the top 32 of Euro Cup. We beat uh, teams like Valencia in Spain. We beat teams like Kim Ki Moscow in Russia. We beat Hapoel Jerusalem. We beat, we beat Bandvit, Lietu Vosritas, Partizan, and so many other teams. And to say these words, I'm still, you know, getting goosebumps. <laughs> because we are still talking about a Romanian club, a country with right. little tradition in basketball. Right. So um, I think uh, I learned how to work under pressure because in this club, you know, every last was like funeral. Right. You know, we got pressure from the president. You know, oh, we had very, very, very high standards. Right. And we must make uh, our players familiar with these standards from the very beginning. So they know that it's no way to mess around. I mean, we need, to, we need to, to act and to play and to win because this is what we do. And okay, everything uh, came to an end, unfortunately, because of some political, political right. reasons and financially right. in 2015. 
And so then you the go to CSU, Stella. C, 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 CBU. No, no, no. First to Stella. Stella Bucharest. Oh. Stella is like the biggest sports brand in, in Romania. Right. Well known for, uh, for, uh, for football, first of all. Right. Uh, everybody also, I think our, uh, our uh, uh, people who are watching us, our viewers, they know about Gheorghe Haji. Yes, Haji, the football the soccer, yeah, soccer player. Soccer yes. Player. So uh, very famous club. And I was intrigued because uh, in Stava, I had the pleasure to work with one of, let's say, my former players, but a very, very good friend, first of all, uh, Virgil Stanescu, former Alabama University and a player with uh, a great career in Europe, played like yeah. in Unix Kazan, in Russia, in Frankfurt Skyliners, in Germany. Yeah. A big guy. So he was the president of the team and he called me to be a, to be a GM. And, uh, um, you know, uh, Stella, a great brand, but with no results in the previous 20 years. Right. So we played once again Euro Cup. Um, I, you know, created a great connection with, Euro, with the Euro League. And I, I'm also now, I'm a Euro League uh, uh, Basketball Institute alumni. I graduated an MBA in sports business with the Euro League and Vitautas Magnus University uh, from Lithuania. I also have a master in basketball uh, in Spanish, uh, in Spain and in Spanish, yes, with Ucam Murcia and sports coach. So also I dedicated a lot of my time of my uh, formal education. You know, I think it's very impor important to uh, keep working and keep uh, evolving. I mean, evolving and be curious. Right. The curiosity is the quality that I treasure most. People who are curious are intriguing and exciting people. And I, I like curious people. And I, uh, when, I, when I meet one, I like to share, uh, if it's possible, all my secrets or all my, <laughs> all, all my, all my knowledge, all my knowledge, better say, uh, with them. So instead, we play, we play back-to-back -back finals and we play for a big club. And, uh, you know, we, we, we put Stella back. Uh, Stella means star. So we put Stella back next to the stars of the league. And then after three years, I uh, decided to go to Sibiu uh, because of the fans. Man, the fans in Sibiu will, yeah, get, will, so will, will give you chills, man. I mean, right. Mo Pratt probably told you. Right. I mean, amazing fans. What can I say uh, for our listeners? Uh, these guys, the fans, they, ha they uh, had a record in 2007, uh, homologated by Guinness World Records, of, for playing 80... 82 hours, the longest basketball game in the history. Two teams, uh, by you know, formed by 15 fans each team. Right. They play. They play the longest basketball in the history. <laughs> so this is the excitement, you know, the, the, the dedication the fans have. Uh, and together uh, in my first season over there, again, the, my trigger was that Sibiu, um, again, didn't make any. Big, accompli big, big success in the last 20 years. I think these 20 years is following me. So uh, in our first year there, we won the cup. So the first trophy after 20 years, we played the finals. Uh, we had amazing success also business-wise. For the second year, we went from 800 season ticket holders to 1,500. We That's went from 18, 18 sponsors, partners, to 40. So, and once again... We went to the Guinness World Records with the largest sports magazine in the world, the Fans Magazine, an anniversary, anniversary number that together with the EuroLeague, we promoted very well and we gathered many uh, famous people to promote it, like Sharuna Sesikiewicz, now coach of Barcelona, and uh, uh, I don't know, uh, many, many um, players, Florent Pietru, uh, Rafa Martinez, so many, okay? Um, so it was an exciting season. And the second one, it ended quickly because you know what happened, pandemic cool. started. Yeah. And um, what can I say? Uh, I wish huh? to continue this year, you know? Let, let's go back to that. Why? Of course, everyone knows 2020, what kind of year that was. Mm -hmm. How did that affect? We all know how it affected players, right? But yes. How did how did Corona affect someone like you, a general manager that was used to working all the time and and you know really being on the go, and then all at once everything is shut down? How did that affect you as a general manager? Man, Corona was a game changer. It was, is like you change your game, or you die, mm -hmm. or you are going to the bottom. 
So it was clear what was going to happen. You know, no fans, um, right. less attractive games to be um, watched because, you know, also the team's budgets went a little bit lower. Also yeah. for, the, for the sponsors, not easy to... Uh, make them join the join the projects because the visibility was less. Right. So, um, I mean, it was a season of changes, and we played in bubbles. Everything was. What can I say, man? I, we, I think we, st- we, we 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 had like totally. Um, I don't want to. I had a, I had the clear numbers, but now I'm I'm uh, I'm saying from my uh, from my memory. I think we 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 ha- we stayed more than three months during the season in hotels in bubbles, in hotels rooms, without being allowed without being allowed to go out, because once you are in the bubble, you don't go out. You stay in hotel. Hey, it's hard psychologically <laughs> for the players, mentally yeah. for the players to prepare them. We told them from day one. The mental toughness is going to give us what we want if we are willing to make the sacrifice and to, uh, to, uh, uh, to get to that level of mental, mental toughness, you know? So it was hard. It was hard. Uh, it was a year when I, uh, okay, when, when it happened, I mean, nobody knew, nobody knew because we didn't, we, didn't, we didn't face something no like president. that. Right. So was what no, was the first no thing? Yes, let's see how we can uh, end the season first of all. How we can uh, uh, what we can di- how we can discuss with the players to make the settlements, to make the gentleman agreements between parties. Uh, what we tell to our sponsors because we still have like few months to offer them. We already cash the money. What we do with our season ticket holders? So a lot of questions to answer and a lot of challenges uh, in front of us. So. Um, the priority was to officially finish the season because right. our federation says stop. This is it. It's not going to. It's not going to an end. And it was too bad. I mean, I remember we signed. I think you know him for sure, Larry Gordon, because he played in Germany yes, for do. many years. So we, Cardiff, yeah. yeah, we signed LG. You know, to to help us to go more than third place because in the second season with Sibiu, we've been in fir- in the on the first on the third place. And you know who else we got in the team? Jared Jordan, the yeah. uh, the all time all time all time leader of the BBL in assists. Yeah. Uh, also Barry Stewart, also Isaiah Fillmore. He has also German passport. So uh, many common names for you and maybe for your listeners. Uh, we made a good team. We competed in FIBA Europe Cup. We, we we got some injuries. Things like we cannot control. You know, on our jerseys this season it says control what you can control because this should be the mindset. You cannot control injuries. You cannot control COVID. But you can control the way uh, how you, you, you want to run the sports business. Right. Sports and business are coming together. Cannot right. be only sports. Cannot be only business because it's right. the joy for the game and it's the love for the game. So, yeah. Um, it was tough first to end the season to tell the guys, sorry guys, we cannot just go home safe with your families let's let's figure it out contract wise uh how we can do it you know to pay and to uh i mean to live on good terms to exactly. live on good terms as, as, then as with, good as possible yes then with the sponsors then with the fans we got a lot of lo- love from the fans of course they wanted to be in the to be in the stands and to cheer for us and to encourage us for the playoff run to go again deep to the finals but it was not going to be like that and it was a crazy summer uh the only good news that I got was that, and the most important one was that my my wife Laura uh, was uh, pregnant with our second baby daughter, and that was also an important reason why I decided to come closer to my hometown and to her hometown, and to move to Bucharest to to join this project uh, voluntary, just a voluntary. Stop, man, from the Stop. scratch. Wait. And now Wait. you you, you yeah, yes, so, yes yes yes. So I, before we get to to your your current club. Um, I know you are also a scout for Real Betis that plays in the ACB mm-hmm. in Spain. Yes. Um, can you talk a little bit about how that came about and what your what your role is as a scout for a, a very top European club? 
Yeah, so it started exactly in the pandemic year, uh, before pandemic. Uh, my dream and the reason why I'm putting a lot of hard work um, is to get out of the comfort zone, which is now Romanian league for me, and to show that I can do what I do in a higher, a higher level. Uh, at a higher level. At a higher level, um, this is the reason why I... Uh, Uh, follow this MBA with the EuroLeague. This is the reason why I learned Spanish, about why, why I graduated another master in basketball in Spain. And um, I had various connections and uh, interviews during the years in Turkey, in, in UK, in Spain. I got a project, uh, you know, I presented to Valencia Basket uh, when they opened the most fascinating uh, basketball complex in Europe. For those It's who don't, don't, don't know, Lalqueria del Basket, is Disneyland of basketball. So yeah. I presented to them uh, some project about how to uh, reach and maximize the potential of what they built with 22 million uh, euros. Kudos to them, amazing. Um, so I was approached uh, on LinkedIn uh, by my good friend now, Asier Alonso Sanz, the uh, assistant GM of, of Real Betis. And he was interested to, um, to have a contact person Uh, in the Balkan area, and uh, he just, you know, said, okay, we are looking for someone who would like to co cooperate with us. I think you have the um, experience and the connection to, to do this. So let's see how we can start. So um, I started as a scouter, not only in, for Romanian market, of course, I'm, I'm, I try, I'm trying to, 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 to help our uh, Romanian talented right. young youngsters. But also on other, other countries in the Balkans and not only, also in the Nordic countries. Uh, and uh, besides scouting uh, players for their academy and, of course, uh, offering my support to the senior team of uh, Costa Real Betis, uh, we agreed to organize events. So my position also evolved um, with the club from scout to international relations and events, which okay. I'm, I'm dealing with right now. Uh, and the first camp was exactly in the summer of 2020, in the middle of, you know, I mean, in the <laughs> full pandemic <laughs> in Romania, a camp in Sibiu uh, with uh, six uh, coaches from Real Betis. And believe me, even we got many uh, challenges, like, for example, the kids were not uh, allowed to play in contact. So it was more like individual development, one against zero. So a lot of restrictions COVID-wise. And of course, many parents scared about the situation. Um, we developed a, an amazing camp and we raised the standards of such events uh, ever organized in, in Romania. And after our camp with Betis in Sibiu, Next year, we had in Romania camp of Jalgiris Kaunas from Lithuania, Ludwigsburg from Germany, and, uh, you know, uh, Vlad Moldovano, the captain of my uh, current team, and his uh, coaches from Greece. So many other, cam uh, many other camps because um, they saw the potential and the level of the demand in our market. So uh, now we are getting ready for the third edition of the camp, and my connection with Good. Betis got better and better. I'm, I have uh, at this moment uh, seven players in Betis Academy, six Romanians and one, uh, one kid from, uh, from uh, UK, uh, from uh, Dubai Elite Academy. And uh, uh, we are preparing for the next season. Um, many kids, you know, they, they receive their great education and um, they, uh, I mean, they are adjusting with the new culture. They learn a, a new language. And of course, um, They play basketball and they develop themselves. But, you know, it's close to what is in America, uh, the idea of student athlete. Right. Because in my country, unfortunately, and in many countries, uh, it's not easy to have a balance between studies and basketball. At one point, a kid or, has to decide. And this is a terrible decision. Right. We don't encourage the kids to do that. No, they need to keep things in balance. And the parents need to support them to do, to do the same. Uh, but of course, it's difficult because of yeah. the times of the practice, the, uh, their um, uh, program in school. Uh, 
However, you know, however, an academy like Betis has, an academy from where uh, superstars like Kristaps Porzingis, like Tomas Satoransky, like uh, uh, Willy Hernan Gomez, um, you know, left to higher stage. Right. I think uh, it's a it's a coherent uh, uh, program and uh, you know well recognized by uh, its uh, results. That's a that that's really good that you that you you see the development of not just players but also the development in yourself. Like you said, you want you want to you don't want to you want to think outside the box and not just be focused on Romania, but also to see what's what else is out there. And I think that's really important. Now let's go into your your club now and talk about how how that came to be and uh, what was it like to come back home yeah a li- like 60 kilometers from home 30 minutes right. from my hometown uh <clears throat> voluntary was a and is a new project actually they had uh, just moved they, didn't they just move up when you came my my yes they just moved right. up in the first division so the technical director of the team um, is my former player and very good friend, uh, Virgil Karutsashu, um, former captain of the Romanian national team. And he called me, uh, explaining me the potential of this club and uh, how serious they are and uh, how much uh, uh, they want to um, invest to be better and to be a well-known organization. Because, as I said, Voluntari is a small city and um here the local authorities and the community they see in sports the perfect ambassador so now okay. we have a top basketball team and a top woman volleyball uh both of us uh, are uh, um will compete on a european in european competition next year so that, that's great so i was intrigued but listen i had as i said the privilege the honor the luck uh, name it however you are uh, however you want that since I I began uh, I began this uh, this this journey at the age of 17. I never finished a season without a medal or a trophy. Never. So always was a That's huge achieve, achievement, and this is the credit of uh, going to my former players and to all my coaches. It's not my credit, but I was uh, lucky to be a part um, behind the scenes, you know, to be a part of of these achievements. Uh, and you know, coming to voluntary was okay. Can we do it to that le- on to that level? But it was hard because nobody knew about the club. So uh, we need to sell. We need to sell the idea. Hey, come here. This is a super green project. If we touch it, and if we touch it right, your names, your heritage will be here forever. You'll be legend. You you'll be legacy. You know, you'll make this part of your legacy and. When, whenever people will talk about this team, how everything started, they will name you. Right. So this, this was my pitch. This was my pitch. And uh, lucky enough, again, uh, we, we've been able to convince like, players like, I don't know, uh, Anthony Hickey, a great point guard, who is now had an amazing season in VTB League in Astana. So he left from voluntary because this is what people don't understand. Many say, oh, if I go to Romania, where I go next? Nobody. Right. No, right. my friends. I have former players who left to Spain ACB, Gerald Lee, to Israel, and Cameron Long, uh, to uh, um, uh, France Pro A, Al Haji Mohamed, to great leagues, Poland, I don't sp- uh, Greece, I don't even speak, so, so many leagues, uh, Lithuania. So um, it's, not an, it's not an open door, it's not a closed door coming to Romania, it's an open right. window. It's an open right. window. So. Uh, we got the chance to sign players like Anthony Hickey, like Divo Joseph, who is now also playing in VTB in Zielona Gora in Poland. Uh, and f- first of all, we signed Vlad Moldovano, as I said, my good, my good friend. And we, we have been looking to work together for so many years. And Vlad is an amazing person, an amazing leader, former, um, uh, he, he graduated college, American University in the States. Uh, and uh, he played, you know, Euroleague, he played uh, in so many countries, and uh, he accepted this challenge together with me and with our coach, uh, Sasha Otsokolic. I worked with him in Stawa, in Imployesht. Uh So I, I had also the trust to say that if I, if, I, if, I, if I come and if I join this project, I would like a coach who will not be afraid to break walls, 
because you know what's the biggest uh, danger when you come into the club like new is that you will take people who will be satisfied with little, yeah. with little result because little, you have to change the whole culture little, of the little is more than previous results. A little yeah. step. Why to, to do more? No. So I cannot, I cannot live like that. Maybe it will be more healthy. I mean, <laughs> uh, uh, but I'm not, I'm not running uh, from pressure. You know, if, if you, uh, what, how is that quote? If you uh, shoot to the moon, you land up on the stars or some, something right. like that. See? Right. So uh, for, for me, this, this is the motto and this is the way how I see the things. I, uh, we, ne we never back, uh, back down from achieving challenge. Uh, yeah, from challenges and for achieving big time. So uh, with these amazing guys, and uh, of course I just named uh, three players, but all 12 uh, have been uh, so, so important. Also Malcolm Lee, former UCLA and NBA player. Uh, he's still with us right now. And, uh, Every, every, everybody else really uh, in our first season uh, we kind of shot the league <laughs> we won the cup and in, during a, an, a crazy final four a final eight sorry uh, unfortunately we beat our body Mo in the semifinals but uh, the story was like quarterfinals we are down minus two three seconds to go Malcolm Lee is fouled on the three point shot He's a 70% free throw shooter. He makes all three. We won by one. Second game, semifinals, we lead by 30. But somehow Krajova and Mo Pratt coming back and they are leading by one, uh, 40 seconds to go. Somehow we make it and we qualify to the final. And guess what? In the final, it happens something that I never seen <laughs> in my entire career. And I, I, I bet that uh, neither, uh, neither you did. So... In the first quarter of the finals against Orada, we didn't score. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Yo, we didn't score. 16-0. Good defense, though, yeah? Good defense, though. 16-0. Good defense. Wow. The first basket, the first points in the second quarter, they score. It's 18-0. <laughs> and from there, we crushed them. We beat them by nine. So... Like this, we won our first trophy and uh, we received the chance to participate for the first time in European competition. And we finished the season on the fourth place. We lost, unfortunately, the bronze final. After in the semifinals, we took Cluj, uh, champion of the league uh, last year. So eventually they won the championship. We took them from 0-2 in the semifinals to decisive game five on their court. But again, uh, we didn't have, uh, we had a few injuries, uh, Anthony Hickey and Vlad Moldovano, uh, two of our most important players, uh, faced some injuries. Again, control what you can control. This we couldn't control. Right. We lost, but, you know, we, uh, we've been able to look each other in the eyes and to congratulate us, uh, uh, congratulate the guys, honestly, for an amazing work. And this year, uh, we... We, 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 won, we won it again. We won it again. Uh, we beat Cluj in semifinals. Cluj, that, uh, at that moment, they lost um, only one game against Hapuel Holon in Champions League. Uh, so we, um, you know, we made the second defeat, uh, second of their defeats. Uh, we won the cup, and now we are on second place. Uh, looking forward to clarify this and to maintain uh, the team on second place. Uh, before the playoffs begin. But again, satisfied with the overall progress and right. always look, 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 looking forward, looking forward. Yeah, never, never satisfied, never satisfied. Good. And this is, this is not a bad thing, you know, after all. It's making you <laughs> sick sometimes and uh, people consider you crazy, but it's, it's not bad, believe me. Tell me, um, as far as your day-to-day your -day goes as a GM, when you're looking at players, what, what's something that you look for in a player? What, what, is, what catches your eyes and what makes you say, okay, that's the guy I'm going to go after? So we are running a continuous uh, scouting process. I will, I will share with you and I, I will try to make it brief. Uh, so we are scouting continuously, man. Um, me, I, I have a few leagues. Head coach has a few leagues and assistant coach has a few leagues to look and we have our database. Actually, you know, I built this database for the last many years. So usually when the summer comes, I'm not, uh, we are looking 
to the players that we already know them for one, two, three, maybe exactly. four or five years. Mm -hmm. This year we signed uh, to our team Todri Gocher from Texas Tech, who played Besiktas, who played uh, uh, France and Greece. And I, I wanted to sign T, uh, TG five years ago, but I couldn't. Mm -hmm. So finally, you know, we are together. We signed Sharunas Vasiliauskas from Turkey. I know Sharas for six years, but I never had a chance to sign. So uh, usually, you know, I, I have a lot of trust in my database. So whatever we see, you know, we, whenever we see an interesting player, we add this player there, then, then um, in the summertime, in the summertime, we have a meeting, uh, we have a meeting with the, with the coach, assistant coach, and we talk about team's identity, how he wants the team to play. Then we are talking about criterias for each position that we are looking to fill. Right. Of course, also about the budget. This is the second part, okay? But criterias. And I'm trying not to make the uh, general mistake of signing good players for a bad team. Very important rule. Very important. For, for, for me and for us, everything is a puzzle. The pieces need to click. All 12. All 12. We are not recruiting players. We are not recruiting stats. We are recruiting the perfect pieces to our puzzle. Of course. This season is the first season of my life when we didn't change any player. Wow. We didn't make any transfer. Wow. It's the first season. And we face difficulties, injuries, but we are very happy with the attitude and with the identity of our team. That's rare. So uh, after we set these things, we go back to our database. And we already have highlighted there some interesting players that could match our team's identity and our requirements. And what we do? First of all, of course, at the first side, we have these, you know, stats, we have the numbers, we have the highlights. Okay. Then my coaches are watching the videos like coaches do. I was not a coach. I was not a player. So I watch the videos like I do. And I like to see the small things. Right. I like to see the reaction. What do you look I, at? What, what are those small things that you look at? Well, first of all, um, if you are, if you are, um, I, I watch like this. I watch your best game. I watch your worst game. Wow. And I watch one to three games against tough opponent in uh, position by position in your league. And I, when I watch these five games, I watch a lot of body language, a lot of body language. Thank you. Justas Tamulis, teammate of Mo in that year in Sibiu, part of Lithuanian national team, uh, university team, one of the reasons besides his amazing shot and what he made him to be the best scorer in a team with other six American players, he was the only, uh, let's say, European player. He was the best scorer and he was accepted by the guys because we had amazing guys, of course, like Mo, like Randall Falker, like Chris Cooper, like Daniel Ewing, former Duke University. So uh, what, 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 we, what made us to sign him was that every single time when I see this guy, he's clapping Positive. after positive after teammates makes the basket or he missed the basket. He missed the shot, sorry, okay? He missed the shot. He was positive. He was there for the team. He was a perfect team player. For me, that was a, a huge, um, how to say, uh, a huge, uh, yeah, accolade, okay, no, accolade. Um, to be, a, the, to be a, such a team player, you know, team oriented. Um, I like to watch how the players do in the four quarters, in the four quarter. If you are a shooter, I want to see how you shoot in the crunch time. I, 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 okay, I can see that you scored, I don't know, 50, I don't know, 70. Devo Joseph last year for our team, he scored 121 three-point shots during last season. But before he came, we watched how Devo Joseph is able to score in the uh, tight games in the last five minutes. Because those are the important shots. Important, yeah. You know, those are the important shots. So we kind of, I, I like to watch tendencies. I, I want to see body language when the players sub in, sub out. 
I, I, I like Thank to see, you. you know, what he's doing on the bench. I like to see what he's doing during the timeout. And after I watch this game, then it's about references. And the, 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 here comes the network. Here comes the network because for his last, if it's the case, three to four seasons, for every season, I'm talking to at least one of his teammates, coach or, coach or GM or team manager, and one coach of opponent team to see how they scout you know, for that team and for him, what, what he said, what it says in what his scouting, see, yes, right? in, in, the in his scout, exactly, in his strengths. scouting reports. And if it's possible, one opponent, like player, like what player right. that I know that I can trust his, uh, right. his opinion, his you know, his judgment, exactly. So I do this for the last four years, minimum, minimum. Ooh, that, hey, then, that, you, that, that, there's so much of what you just said that players don't realize. They don't realize that, that, They're, they're being seen by everybody and they watch the little things. When yeah. I was coaching, what I, what I used to like to do was to go early to a game, sit in the stands and just watch the player that I was interested in. And I would look at things like how he interacted with the younger players, uh, how focused he was, his, his pregame routine. Um, and like you said, body language is, is just huge. So I think there's a lot of, a lot of things that, that players, they think, okay, I put up great stats, but When you came out of the game, you didn't clap to your teammates, even if you were up or down. And those are things that, that I think players really need to understand that, that, that they're being watched all the time and not all just the time. because of their numbers. Exactly. And small um, thing, real quick, real yeah. quick we're, we're running out of time. But, but I really need to get this question. Yeah. Okay. So th they say that coaches are hired to be fired. Oof. So how do you balance? Um, you have a coach that you trust, that you like, but we all know it's a business. You don't just wake up one day, fire a coach, and then present a new coach the next day. So how do you flirt, kind of, with other coaches, network with other coaches, while you have a good coach in, in your, on your team now? How do you balance that? Man, it's tough. It's a, it's, That's it's tough. A, it's, a tough <laughs> it's a tough question. I'm telling you why. Employees, we had the same coach for uh, seven years. Mm -hmm. He didn't left. Unfortunately, he passed away in the last season. Oh, okay. And the assistant coach, who is now head coach, he became, took yes, he took over. He took over and he proved that uh, he belongs to this, uh, uh, to this high standards of, you know, building championships teams. teams. Then in Stawa, I faced two coaches change, co uh, coach, uh, uh, coaching uh, changes, yes? And it was very difficult for, uh, for me to understand because I like to have stability on right. the bench because mm -hmm. you know why I, I i like when the player comes in you know signing with us at the beginning of the season he knows that that coach is there for two three four five six right. years so he right. knows that that coach is the boss over there right he will live he will live before the coach will live right it's important to send this message and the coach together with uh, the most representative players of the team They are the pillars. They are the pillars of our structure. They can send the correct message. They can set the standards. They can put everything on the same track. But I'm not hiding. When, when I was on the point, on the, on the position to uh, hire a new coach, man, signing a player, it's like this. Easy. Signing Easy. a coach. Oh, my God. I, we yes. had like the shortlist had so many names. And the interviews, <laughs> you know, uh, have been like, very um, demanding, demanding. But you know, during the interviews, you cannot see the real picture. You need to have, you need to have the coach with you in the trenches and to see how right. they are, how he's facing the real difficult, because everything is uh, milk and honey, you know, when you talk, <laughs> yeah, this is my philosophy, this is, this is, this is that. But we need to understand as managers that it cannot be one person to be blamed for a um, failure. Okay. Success or failure. Success or failure. We are all part of this, you know. We are all part of this, and we need to share the responsibility next to the coach we have on the bench, because, uh, you know, if we don't have the confidence and if, if we don't support the coach when it's tough, it's hard. I mean, we are there for nothing. We are cheerleaders, man. Okay. And, I mean, I will never be a cheerleader. I will always want to be, you know, a, a honest person 
who will uh, say some things straight in the face. I I try to manage because I have uh, let's say high temperament, and uh, you know <laughs> uh, the blood the, the the blood is running very quickly into my veins. So uh, I try to manage. I try to learn. I try to adapt. I try to uh, put aside the basketball talks after the game for the next morning. You know. Even though you know me and coach, we both want to talk about the game and how how everything happened, even if it's good or bad. So um, you need to manage this also on the human side because we are humans, and also coaches they have their families. They are coming. They are uh, you promise them a stability and you fire them in six months. Come on, man, that's not coach's mistake. It's, no, it's, it's, it's your not. mistake. But what one important thing, and I uh, I hope it will um, it will be a a, a good, a good, not a good answer, but something that uh, uh, can be helpful for our listeners is that the manager is the one who is appointing a direction for the club because the coach works for the team, the manager works for the club. So how we see the identity and how we want to set the culture and how we are making finally together with the coach the selection everything needs to click yeah. the type of the coach is uh, how to say uh, de is definitely an important criteria in selecting the players and if you get into the situation when coach you need to cut the coach then the coach you need to bring needs to fit needs to fit the identity that we already set already have established and the right. roster that you already have right to 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 be on the same path you cannot change everything you know because you'll bring a coach who will see okay what kind of roster is this i would never coach such a team but this is what you you what you put you know as a uh, direction for the team so uh you need to be consistent and uh, in in your beliefs in your beliefs and uh, to trust yourself to trust yourself that when you made a decision you cannot give up easy you cannot give up easy to to someone even if he's coach or a player. You need to support him. You need to push him. You need to understand him when he's hard. And I, I swear it's the most beautiful feeling when you support someone when it's tough for him, when, down. when, he, when he struggles, when he's, you know, deep with his head in the, in the sand. And somehow you as a team are uh, pulling everything out and uh, uh, finally you, you enjoy success together. And then is the moment when you remember the tough times, the difficult times, and how you... Because it's about the journey. It's not about the final result. The medal should be a consequence, not a goal. Not a goal. Uh, I, 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 would like that. Right. I, I would like that the trophies and the medals and the success will be like the consequence uh, of how we set the tone for everything that our club means on and off the court. Because believe me, from the front office... Uh, when the game starts, the referee calls, my hands are like this. I, I cannot do anything. You have no control. I'm watching and I'm supporting and that, 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 that's it, you know. But whatever happens during like 24-7, to, to be active 24-7, to be there, you know, for your community, for your juniors, for your, uh, uh, for your partners, to be an active part of the, of the community, this is mandatory for a club. A club cannot exist only in the game day because in the game day you lose in any given Sunday. Yes, like Al Pacino movie, in any <laughs> given Sunday you lose or you win and that's it. It's yeah. important what you do in the other six days and also in the day, game, in the day game before and after the game to provide the full experience and to, to feel the people that they belong to that story because when they go home, man, they don't say they lost or they won. We say, they say we, we. we. Yeah. What what's the most popular drink you 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 know, Coca Cola probably yeah, Coca Cola. What's the most popular drink you know, the brand, Cola. I uh, saw so, yeah 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 okay. So how many people you have seen having uh, the logo of Coca Cola tattooed on their skin? <laughs> But how many people have you seen with the tattoo with the, their favorite team? Oh yeah, a ton. So many right, so many yeah. because this is the amazing. Um, synergy between the the fans and the clubs yeah. between and the the, the passion that uh, um, a, a sports organization uh, players uh, coaches all together they can uh, um, share to those who are watching them and who are believing in them
that is that's a really great message and I, I really appreciate you you telling how it is as a as a gym it's not just it's not all easy it's not all fun and games but there's a lot of hard work a lot of connecting there's a lot of a lot of things that the normal person would have no idea about and i really really appreciate you telling the story about how how what you look for in a player because i think that's very important and and a lot of people need to understand that it's not just we look at the numbers he averaged 28 points there no. he's going to average 28 points here it's not no, it's no. not like that and so, if if the player if the if the gm is not willing to uh, make a video call with the player before they sign him oh. players need to need to say hey let's make a video call let's see our faces exactly. please show me exactly. some cuts with the coaches show me some cuts of what you saw in my game yeah. and what you like about my game and what you want me to uh, transfer uh, to, to 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 your team We are doing this. We are making videos. We are sharing. Hey, we we saw that you can do this. We need this for our team. This is how you are going to help us. Put everything straight. And after these uh, video calls and everything, then discuss with the agent about money and about everything. Negotiate. And if you f- you have the feeling, if you believe in your guts that he is uh, the right person for your team, then hire the player. And if the player feels that hey, this is the right fit for me, then sign with that club. Put everything in balance and sign. And you know what? It needs to be a win-win situation at the end of the day. For everyone. Right? If you feel the win-win situation, then it's perfect. If you feel that it's one way, it's not going to match. So you know, thank you again, man, for coming on. I appreciate it. You My did pleasure. a great job, and um, I hope the teammates out there got some value, yeah, valuable information. I know I did uh, of how the inner workings of a general manager in a high pressure job how how really tough it is um so thank you I, i know you've got some some stuff going on you could probably miss the, the rest of the under 16 game but man go home to your wife and kids man get i heard I, i heard the cheers i, I think i think we won <laughs> okay. i think we won so it's good <laughs> so um get out there and and check that out for the last couple minutes and i i really appreciate you coming on and and giving some valuable insight and thank you i appreciate it my pleasure man thank you and uh you know Uh, keep uh, staying in love with uh, with the with the game and uh, share your uh, share your passion because you are also doing a great job and uh, I Thank enjoy you. reading your platforms. Thank you, man. So I'm gonna say goodbye to your teammates. Have a good night, man. So uh, teammates. Thank you for watching. I really appreciated my guest coming on and sharing his knowledge. Um, it's it's crazy what you can learn. I mean, I've been in this business for a long time and I learned a lot from him tonight um, on how the inner workings of a basketball team go. Um, as usual, the this episode will be on YouTube probably tomorrow, I hope. And you can find the other guest information and everything around uh, your step, this, this show that I created. Um, And and hopefully you you will have liked something and seen something that you can use for yourself or someone you know. So please like, share, pass this information on, and let's let the community grow. Uh, my mission, as always, is to provide knowledge and give quality quality information to everyone interested interested in playing overseas or the casual fan as well. My book, same name, different game, is also on sale. The Euro Step and my past interview series called The Fourth Quarter, all also online to see. And those are methods uh, that will help me get the message out. And I hope everybody can feel and understand the passion that I have for this game, even though I haven't played for for quite a while. But yeah, it's 9.03 now. Thank you for joining. Thank you for tuning in. I hope you tune in next week. Next week we'll have multiple guests, I think. Uh, so I'll be quite busy getting everything ready. So thank you again. Good night. Be safe. Old head out.